All right, what's up friends? It's Harrison here, and today we're gonna to be talking about how I knew I was transgender. I think this can be broken up into two different parts. Being transgender doesn't necessarily mean that you wanna go on hormones, that you wanna get surgery. It just means that that's just how you identify. There are many different ways people can transition. So there's socially transitioning, there's physically transitioning, there's medically transitioning, there is surgically transitioning. I'm in the process, I think actually, I think it's called chemical transition. I think that's what my doctor said. So I am in the process of chemically transitioning right now. I'm on testosterone and I have been on testosterone for about five weeks now. How did I know that I wanted to take that next step in my transition? I've been publicly as a man for about five years, but I just started to medically transition. I always knew that I wanted to medically transition, but I had to deal with some timing. So now this point in my life is where I'm starting, but I always, knew that that was something in my future. This is just my story on my take on how I am transgender. There's many different ways and not just my way is the only way. No, everybody has their own different way to be transgender, but I just kind of wanted to talk about how I knew because hearing other people's stories, hearing their way of life and their experiences, I was able to relate to transgender people more than any type of person and that's how I knew that I was transgender. And there are some people that find out that they're transgender later on in life, but I always knew. I always knew that I was a boy. Now there is a difference between growing up a tomboy and growing up as transgender. Tomboys and tra and people that are trans are different and I'm going to do another story because I have a lot of friends that uh, that were tomboys growing up. So I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna be doing some videos with them to kind of talk about the differences, but I'm gonna talk about my experience as trans. And tomboys might have a similar experience and be like, oh you're just a tomboy, but no, trust me, I'm not. I'm gonna talk about it right from the beginning and right up till now. So growing up, I oh, I was always in a single sex environment. I went for, to an all girls school from kindergarten to grade seven. And I never really understood the segregations of genders because I never had dealt with it. And that's when I really, really felt uncomfortable was when I was put in a co-ed environment, but we'll start from when I was a child. So I always, whenever I was in my make-believe world or whenever I was in a scenario with friends where we would make up our own situations and play pretend, I was always a boy. Never a girl, I never wanted to be a girl. I would always be like a knight, I would always be, I'd always envision myself as just a boy or a man. I never really vibed with girls clothing at all. Like my mom barely could get me into a dress. From a very young age, I showed very much discomfort and I showed very much hate towards it. Eventually my mother was just like, I was probably six or seven and my mom just gave up. I was like, so I was able to wear like tuxedos to like family functions. I was able to dress as a boy and that was very comforting for me because I always felt distressed in a dress, kind of rhymes. So that was when I kind of knew. And then also when I was watching movies or watching TV shows and I would always relate to the male characters. When I got older, my envy became more apparent, but when I was younger, I always really connected with the boy characters, but I never really knew, I'd, I'd never been around boys. I only had a sister. All my friends were girls and I never had been around boys. So I didn't realize how differently they were treated. I didn't realize that there was actually boys in the world. I didn't realize there was actually people that were born the way that they felt. I always felt like some people felt like me. It's kind of a simple thought. It's kind of a beautiful thought that I just always thought that people were what their mind was. And I thought that people thought like me, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to put this into words, but I kind of want to try in my best way. Yeah, I always grew up wanting to be a boy and always seen as a boy. I never wanted to be seen as a girl. I can remember going to a wedding and I was in a tuxedo and this is probably the first time where it really kind of clicked. And I remember going to the wedding with my sister and somebody turned to us, like we had like the Polaroid cameras or like the, the twist ones where you snap and somebody grabbed my sister's camera and was like, hey, do you want me to take a picture of you and your brother? And I remember that felt so natural and I was like, oh yeah. And then my sister was like, oh no, no, that's my sister. And I remember feeling like, oh. And I was seven at that time where I was like, oh, that's uncomfortable. That's not, I don't want to be seen as a sister. I want to be seen as a brother. But yeah, so that was like one of the, one of the moments where I was like, I'm in the wrong body but it didn't really feel too much of a discomfort. I just was like, oh, that's that kind of sucks. I didn't realize how, at the time, how bad that made me feel. As I got older, like around 13, 14 is when I went to a co-ed school, I really did not like how I was viewed and I didn't want, I didn't like the pressures of being a girl and putting on makeup 
having big breasts, wearing a bra, being seen. Oh, it just kind of makes me squeamish thinking about it. But yeah, like I would wear a bra and present as a woman. I would straighten my hair every morning. I'd put on makeup at 13 or 14. Man, that sucks. But yeah, I'd put on makeup, go out with boys and really kind of just hate the way that I was. I was very sad. I can remember feeling very sad. But at that time, I didn't have knowledge of what being transgender meant. I didn't know anybody transgender. I didn't. I had never seen anybody in the media transgender and I didn't know what that was. I thought, because I identify as a straight trans man, I thought that my discomfort and my isolation was from my sexual orientation and my desire for to be with another girl. And I thought that that's why I felt isolated was because all my other girlfriends, everybody wanted to be with boys and boys wanted to be with girls. I hadn't seen anybody really that was a lesbian around that time and I, that's what I felt. I was uncomfortable, like I always knew I wanted to be a boy, but I didn't know it was possible for me to be a boy. So I thought that I would just have to grow up as a woman, but I would grow up as a gay woman and that in itself isolated me and that's why I felt discomfort. So I was 13 or 14 and I can remember having these sexual attractions to women or to girls in my class and I was thinking, ugh, they would like me if I was a boy. It's so unfair that these boys get to be with these girls and they get to voice their crushes, they get to voice how they feel about these women without feeling isolated and without having to worry about judgment. And that's what I felt that I was isolated from. That's what I felt ashamed of, was that I was a girl that was attracted to girls. And I remember thinking in my mind, it would be so much easier if I was just a boy, I could still be attracted to women and it would just be seen as normal. But then I read an article and I was 14 and I was online. And I remember reading this article about this, the youngest trans person in Germany. It was a German article. And people have asked me recently, like who that was, like, can I find that article? I still can't find the article, but I just recently found out who they were. It, it was, um, Kim Petrus, I don't know if I'm saying the name right, but I just found out who she was like a couple weeks ago. I found one of her songs on iTunes and I loved it. And I was like, oh man, this is such a great song. So I looked up the artist and they talked about their past and I saw pictures of them and I was like, oh my gosh, that's the person from the article that I read when I was 14. And that, that put, that made me realize that I was transgender and that I had hoped to transition. It talked about her feelings towards being born a boy and that she just felt such discomfort, talked about how much more peaceful she felt after her transition and like that she was appearing more of a woman and, and was able to take hormones and was able to get surgery and just felt so much better. And that was my like eureka moment when I was 14. And I was, I remember in my bed, I was on my laptop and I was researching all this stuff. And I was like, that is me. And even though I was a trans woman, I still felt that connection to her. And I was like, I feel really connected to everything that she's saying. And that my, I have light at the end of the tunnel that I won't have to feel this miserable. And I can now put a term to who I am. I am not a gay woman. I am a man. I'm a straight man. And I can ultimately look the way that I want to look. I can have a future where I'm a dad. I can have a future where I'm a grandpa or an uncle and seen as a brother. Even though 11 years later is when I started my medical transition, I still like always had that in the back of my mind that that was what my future would look like and that gave me hope. I'm not sure where I would be if I didn't have that hope, if I would still be here, if I didn't have that hope. So Kim Petras, if you're watching this, I'm not sure if you will be, but thank you. Thank you for being so public with your story and being so brave because you saved my life. Wow. I got real emotional real quick, but yeah, so that was when I knew, that was when I knew, but I always put that in the back of my mind that I was like, okay, I know I'm transgender, but I'm not gonna assert myself as a man until I can medically transition because I don't think people will take me seriously. If I, if I look the way that I look, I had long hair, I very much presented as a young woman and I didn't want to create any waves. I, I already felt isolated enough being a gay woman at that time, that I didn't want to put any more strain on myself. So I put that in the back of my mind, but I always knew that I was a man. So yeah, so I had always lived my life as a gay woman. And I thought that I would be okay being seen out in public as a gay woman until I could medically transition, but things got really distressing for me. 
as I grew older and I went to university and I was just seen as a woman and I, I didn't want to wear makeup, I didn't want to do anything and I just wanted to be seen as a boy. I just wanted to cut my hair short. I just, just the older I got and the more comfortable I got in my own skin, the more that I, it was necessary for me to, to socially transition as far as I could without taking hormones. If I didn't play sports, I would have taken hormones a lot sooner, but I was on a scholarship for university f to play on the women's ice hockey team. I couldn't jeopardize that. And playing professionally and to be a professional athlete on, on the women's team, I didn't want to, I didn't want to stop playing hockey. I probably would have been ready to medically transition if I had the support of my family around 15. Like that's when I knew. That's when I knew that I needed to do this, but I needed to delay it for sports. I needed to delay it for sports. So I presented very much as a gay woman until my second year of university. And then something in me just snapped and I was like, okay, I need to start presenting more as a male. I know that I probably will be misgendered a lot, but I need to start presenting as a male. Each progression, as I reached those points, I got comfortable with those points and then I was like, I need to take this further and then I need to take this further. So the first step that I took to present more masculine was cutting my hair. So I had my hair probably down to like here in my first year of university and then I cut it to about here, second year of university, and then like a few months later I cut it to here and then a few months later I started buzzing my sides. So it took me a while to kind of gain that confidence. So once I started, I, I felt infinitely better once I started cutting my hair and I was like, this is great. I can deal with this. This is fine. And then I started to feel like, okay, I want more. So I started to grow my body hair. I started to grow up my armpit hair. I started to grow up my leg hair and that was great. And then I was like, no, this isn't enough. I need to change my name. I cannot go by Haley anymore. It's too feminine. I need to change my name. So I started to toy with different names. And then I asked my closest friends to start calling me by male pronouns or start referring to me by male pronouns. Ultimately, I progressed to everybody calling me Harrison, to everybody using male pronouns. So I did all I could without medically transitioning. I still feel gender dysphoria. The only thing that can help that is surgery and hormones. So every time I talk to a stranger, I feel very uncomfortable with the sound of my voice. I don't like it. It's a dead giveaway of who I am, of what I am. There's no question, I sound very much like a woman. My voice is dropping like a little bit now that I'm on hormones, but I knew that I needed to have a masculine voice. Every, like it happens every time I talk, every time I talk. It's just not me. I need it to be lower. I need to have a masculine voice. I just, it's something that I need so I can go through my daily life. I go through my daily life and I live my life and I talk to people. I don't just like, I'm not just mute, but I know that it's something that's very distressing for me and I need that to change. And I know I will feel so much better once it changes and once it drops. And then another thing that I knew that I needed to medically transition was my chest. When I do get gendered as a man, when I do get called he, when I do get all that stuff, I feel immediately uncomfortable as soon as somebody says that, that I don't know. As soon as like a stranger, I'm like, oh my gosh, are they gonna see my chest? And are they gonna be worried that they made a mistake in referring to me as a man because they see my chest and they're like, oh crap, that's a woman. So this is also a dead giveaway of what I am, of who I am. And I know as soon as I get top surgery, I'm gonna feel infinitely better. And I'm gonna be able to present more in public. Every stage of my life, I've had something that I've worked towards, I've achieved it. And then, and then I'm working towards the next thing. So the first step for me was dressing in men's clothing. And then I wore men's cologne and wore men's deodorant. And then I changed to short hair. And then I grew body hair. And then I changed my name. I changed my pronouns. And now I'm taking hormones to change my voice and I'm getting surgery to change my appearance. So those are all the steps that I took and that's how I knew that I was transgender. So I don't know, I hope this makes sense. I hope this makes sense, but I've, I've just always wanted to explain it in my own way on how I knew that I was transgender. I just felt very distressed in the body that I'm in. Every time I look in the mirror, I stand in front of the mirror and I'm naked 
I look at it. I'm not disgusted. I like my body. I think I think I have a very fit body. I love my muscles. I love everything about it. But there is always there's just something that's wrong. I just don't like this area. This area right here is just a lot. I don't like my bottom area either, but that's not something that's really necessary for me to change. I don't know if I'll change it in the future, but it's not necessary right now. I just feel very like distressed here. This is just the next thing that I don't want to look at. And I want to look at my face in the mirror. I want to see a more masculine face. I want more of a masculine hairline. I want more of a masculine jaw. I want facial hair. That's how I knew that it, it, I wasn't a tomboy. I, I very much want to be, wanted to be a boy. I wanted to be a man. And I just wanted to look in the mirror and see who I felt on the inside because who I feel on the inside is screaming and, cr and crawling and scratching to get out, but I couldn't yet. And it's still, it's still not there. I'm still not tra transitioned as much as I would like to be, but I know I'll feel better when I can look in the mirror and see a more masculine face and when I can open my mouth and hear a masculine voice and when I can look at myself after a shower in the mirror and see a chest that reflects who I am. That's how I know that I have gender dysphoria and that's how I know that I'm transgender and that's how I know I needed to medically transition. So I hope that this maybe helps somebody that is going through what I'm going through and they can say, oh wow, I, I, I went through what he was going through because that moment, reading that article when I was 14 years old, thinking, wow, that's what I'm going through. I didn't feel so alone. I felt like I could relate to somebody and it infinitely helped me. So I hope that I can just help even one person from watching this video. But yeah, so anyways, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow any of my social medias, they're down below. And I will see you next time. All right, take care.